Hi, my name is Dusty Leonards, and today I'll be sharing with you my experience with dyslexia. Almost everyone knows someone who has dyslexia, but unless you have it for yourself, you'll never truly understand what someone with dyslexia goes through. This is one of the better representations I have seen of dyslexia. I have personally dealt with all three of the examples shown here. I want you to imagine writing a word down that you know how to spell and still misspelling it. Now imagine that word is your first name. Dyslexia makes math, reading, and spelling to very big challenges. The most common mistake I make is flipping letters. The two most common letters I flip are B and D. I remember a time about seven years ago when an English teacher showed me a paper where I tried to write about something getting stuck in a ditch. <laughs> this doesn't just apply to uh, numbers, uh, to letters. This also applies to numbers. For years, I used five, S, and two interchangeably. One day, an old teacher of mine, Robin Davis, showed me a new way of writing twos. To this day, I write my twos this way so I don't get them mixed up in my head. Dyslexia makes math into a very difficult subject. Part of this is the fact that I flip the letters, flip the numbers, but another part of it is that dyslexia hinders one's ability to understand conceptually what you're trying to achieve with a math equation. The best solution I have found to this is just extended periods of time working with the concept. The biggest issue I have with dyslexia is my reading. Do you remember what books challenged you in the fourth grade? I do. I struggled to read Berenstein Bears books in the fourth grade. My dad recently reminded me of a time when I was reading something out loud to him. I want you to read the word on the screen. When I read it, I read or dot. Not only did I flip the B and the D, but I messed up the syllables in my head. This is just one example of what I have to go through anytime I read anything from a paragraph to school to a novel. Spelling and reading go hand in hand. Last year, I was applying for a summer application, for a summer program. I had to rewrite that application three times. The word I kept misspelling is my own middle name and my dad's first name, Michael. You can ask my friends. They saw me rewrite this application three times because I did not know how to spell my own middle name. I had to ask someone how to spell it. Now, after three times writing it down, I learned how to spell Michael. But this is just one word out of many that I never learned how to spell. When discussing dyslexia, it is important to understand that there are different levels of severity. Both of my parents had dyslexia, but they will tell you that what they saw me deal with was worse than what they had to deal with. And they will also tell you that they deal with it to this day. Unlike my parents, I was lucky and had a teacher tell me at a young age that I should get tested for dyslexia. This led to me going to the Starpoint School from fourth to sixth grade. The time I spent there was invaluable. They taught me many skills I needed to learn how to cope with my learning disability. I have accepted that I will never fully overcome dyslexia, and I'm okay with that. Dyslexia has taught me many different lessons. When I think back, uh, there have been several times in my life when I've wanted to quit. And when I think back about what gives me the ability I have to work hard today, I think of all the nights I spent staying up studying that I know should not have taken me that long. And on an even deeper level, dyslexia has taught me that you have to accept some things in life. And I'm not talking about accepting the level at which I comprehend something, but rather accepting that in life, some things would be more difficult. Thank you.